Hello everybody. 2021 is upon us and I'm certainly glad as I'm sure you are as well with the, the last year with 2020. With this new year there's a I feel a certain uh, degree of optimism in terms of our cattle production and our business in the cattle industry. I'd like to visit with you a little bit today about uh, how we might want to consider managing our grass calves prior to going to grass in this this coming spring. Uh, at the KSU Beef Stalker Unit, we've been conducting a series of trials over the last three or four years looking at limit feeding. And with this question upon us in terms of how we might consider managing our stalkers prior to grass, a trial that we conducted back in 2007 come to mind. And in this particular trial, we basically fed a 54 NEG diet and we fed one treatment ad libitum, which was as much as they cared to appetite. And then we restricted three other treatments to two and a half percent, two and a quarter, and two percent immediately for about 67 days prior to going to our native Flint Hills grass. Now, we're all aware of our rising feed costs. Uh, I visited with a, a, a colleague of mine in the Ag Econ Department, Dr. Glenn Tonzer, this morning. And, I told him I calculated diet costs and I use five dollars in the calculation and ninety dollars wet distillers grains if you can get it uh, as well as uh, our uh, alfalfa and prairie hay and so uh, I utilize beefbasis.com and if you're not aware of this incredible tool uh, it was developed by members and others in the Department of Agricultural uh, Economics and it's a wonderful tool in terms of giving you a spotlight using our feeders and our corn futures, looking at the potential value of gain that might exist in this market environment. And so I did, and I visited with Glenn, and he made sure that to remind me that we also need to take into consideration some of the, the, the hedging and protection tools to, to support what the market is saying here looking into the future. But as we look at how we might consider managing our cattle, uh, I'd like to share with you uh, a series of four different graphs, our trial that we conducted back in 2007. At the time, uh, we had uh, essentially 24 pens. And these incoming calves weighed 420 pounds. And I'm not so sure if one can find that size of calf uh, uh, today as we did back in 2007. But uh, the long story short of it, we, we full fed this 54 diet, uh, 54 NEG diet, and we restricted the remaining three treatments to the two and a half, two and a quarter and two percent of their weight. And as you see, the, we see the, the decline in average daily gain as we restrict the amounts of, of ration available to that calf to each treatment. We also saw an increase in the efficiency and that's very consistent with the results that we have seen with our recent work with respect to limit feeding. We see improvements in feed efficiency of about 27-28%. We see also about a 45% reduction in manure output which in today's uh, uh, age of environmental consciousness and sustainability is, is a, a, a really additive feature for our beef production today. If we go to the next slide, uh, our costs, and I updated the costs as I indicated before, looking at $5 corn, uh, $90 distiller's grains, uh, prairie hay at about $75, and alfalfa at about $120. And I might be a little short on that cost, but as it, as it goes, what we see is that there's a feed savings with the restriction starting at $18.65 to $22.31 for the 2% restricted treatment. If we go to the next page, we took those calves immediately to, to grass and those calves going on grass weighed 587 pounds to 562 all the way down to 530 pounds so we essentially shrunk those two percent restricted calves uh, on their body weight now about 60 pounds compared to those their their ad lib fed counterparts overall throughout the entire 90 day grazing season we saw an increase in essentially what we saw was a 
uh, uh, compensatory growth. The calves that were restricted during the backgrounding phase caught up on grass, uh, not quite so much, especially for the 2% restricted cattle. Uh, if we go to the next page, the final page, looking at the cost savings benefit, what we're seeing is that when limit feeding at two and a quarter percent, and I can tell you that today, based upon our recent uh, work here over the last three or four years, uh, our research, our group believes that the two, two and a quarter percent of dry matter intake is really the sweet spot when we want to restrict and, and limit feed our calves for optimized growth. And what we see is there is a, approximately about a five cents per pound savings from the cost per pound of gain. And that's looking at gaining, for those calves full fed that gain 362 pounds versus the 349 pound limit fed calves from the backgrounding through the, the grass season. Uh, we also accounted for the manure handling. And, and like I indicated earlier before, uh, we see a tremendous opportunity for reducing, and I only use 40%, but our numbers suggest upwards of 47 to 50%. And we see a savings of $2.14 per head. The other thing that we don't take into account is that because we have limit fed calves, the two and a quarter percent, they weigh less body weight, about 13, 14 pounds. But when you look at a fixed land area, that being a pasture, and we stock at 250 pounds of beef to the acre, we have the extra potential to add 14 added calves of like size to that particular grazing area. So when it's all said and done, based upon the trial we conducted in 2007 and looking at today's feed costs and marketing conditions, we see a value in terms of restricting calves of about $24. Now back to the beefbasis.com. I ran several scenarios on this incredibly useful tool and I saw value of gains buying calves tomorrow on the 6th and holding them through September 1, looking forward at our, at our corn and our feeder calf futures, I saw a value of gain of about 116, upwards to $125 per, uh, per, per hundred, which, you know, with feed costs of gain, we're looking somewhere in that with, with mass treat if you have to, and maybe even throwing in the death loss involved when you deal with these animals, we're looking at about a dollar to dollar, dollar five or so. So there's incredible opportunities. And the way the market is now with the, the very slight departure in terms of the buy price and the sell price of these calves, uh, I certainly believe there represents a great opportunity for our producers and reason why I do have some enthusiasm for 2021.